Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Novel Vibe webinar series. Uh, today's webinar will be about creating and managing landing pages. My name is Craig Altham and I'm uh, going to be presenting. We're joined by Adam Wingate, Justin Larson, and Landon Stott. We're all members of the Vibe Resource Library team. Uh, so we manage a lot of the content that you find out on vibe.novel.com under uh, Resource Library. If you have any suggestions for us with regards to improvements, any workspaces you'd like to see us build, uh, or just questions in general about how to use Novell Vibe, we ask that you send us an email uh, there at vibelibrary at novell.com. Today's webinar, uh, we're going to be talking, like I mentioned, about creating and managing landing pages and about some of the key business issues that it helps organizations resolve. The first would be improved customization. A uh, landing page provides an excellent opportunity to put a custom personal face on a workspace or on folders in your Vibe site, while still providing the team-focused collaborative functionality that Vibe affords. The other uh, key business issue that it resolves is retrievability. Landing pages increase the accessibility and visibility of the information that is most critical to your team or organization and you can bring important entries or entire folders to the forefront of a workspace, which ensures that users who are using the landing page or workspace can access the information that they need in a quick and efficient manner. I wanted to show you a quick example of this, so I'm going to go over here to uh, 5.novel.com and uh, take you here to the resource library. You'll see here that I am logged in as the resource library user. We're going to click on Workspaces, and then the particular workspace I'm looking for is under Government, and it's the City of Plattsburgh landing page and workspace area. So you'll see here within City of Plattsburgh, there's this uh, main landing page area that kind of acts as a dashboard. There's a header, there's the information about the city. Uh, there's the public portal where public users can use it, as well as an inter internal employee portal. The employee portal uh, would take the individuals to an intranet, where you'll see that uh, only employees would be able to see information about the fire department, uh, department issues. Uh, they'd be able to access important documents, be able to get a hold of uh, different automated processes and things like that. So that's just one example of a well put together workspace that uh, has a landing page to bring the entire entries or folders to the forefront of the workspace, making it easily accessible to those who are using it. So uh, now what we're going to do is uh, get back into the build of the landing page. So this shouldn't take too long, but we'll go ahead and Go back to the divide.novell.com. I'll go back to home. Then I'm going to go to my workspace where I've created an example landing page. Okay. Now, this is, these are some elements that uh, we could have on our landing page. And I'm going to go ahead and click workspace, edit workspace, and just delete all of these elements because it seemed a bit jumbled. And we'll go back over. Uh, the different elements, the things that we've pulled onto this editor's canvas. The first high-level item that I'd like to uh, show you is this landing page layout area where uh, you can basically set up what you want to be visible. So we'll go ahead and talk about the different parts of the landing page. Over here, we have the masthead, which is a branding area. You could hide that from certain users if you wanted to. Over here is the navigation panel. The uh, menu bar is here, and then this permalinks is the footer. And so we'll go back to Edit Workspace, and you'll see that you can click these boxes here and hide each of those or keep them visible, depending on how you want them. If the box is checked, it means it would hide that specific layout option. There's also the landing page style, light or dark. 
when we get finished, we'll play with the light and dark to see if it gives a look and feel that is better as opposed to the other. So uh, we recommend a couple of best practices uh, with landing pages. To easily add content for your landing pages, we certainly recommend uh, whenever possible, building custom pieces using HTML elements on the landing page itself. If you want to duplicate the same information on multiple landing pages from something that you've added as an HTML element, create the information in an entry somewhere on Vibe that you have access to. And after you create the information in an entry, you can then reference that entry from multiple different landing pages. So for more information on that, you can go to our Advanced Users Guide and get information. If you plan to edit an HTML item, ensure that you have local copies of all images in the HTML because images do not load properly. So when you edit the landing page, you must have local copies so you can put those images back in. Another best practice uh, is regarding look and feel. To create a nice looking professional landing page, we recommend using professional graphics to incorporate into the page. Use simple images for the background that can be repeated vertically and horizontally. And I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. For subject headers, uh, we recommend setting the opacity somewhere between 0.65 and 0.85 in your code. And try to round each corner to somewhere between 4 and 10 pixels to ensure that uh, settings for each corner are, are consistent and look nice. When you want to display a graphic on the landing page, especially in tables, resize the graphic outside of Vibe using Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, or another program like that before you add it into the landing page. Then use that pre-sized graphic as a building block to build out the desired size page. When you want to display a calendar on the landing page, always use the Enhanced View element. So that's over here, the Enhanced View. And we'll cover exactly what that does and the benefit that you get from displaying a calendar that way a little bit further on in the webinar. If your table contains pixels, you must add an additional column to the table that has a width of an asterisk in order for the columns to stay at their fixed widths. This is an HTML browser requirement. And uh, so that actually takes us to the next part of the webinar that I'd like to show you is uh, how to set that up. So I'm going to grab this table element drop it down in the editor's canvas. I'm going to leave the rows at 1 and set the columns actually to 5. The column width that I'd like to do, uh, the first I'll leave as an asterisk. Then I'll do uh, 100 pixels for the second column, 700 for the third column, and another 100 uh, pixel column in the fourth column. And then we'll set the fifth column again to an asterisk. Okay, so now you'll see here it kind of looks funny, but what it does is when we put elements into the page, it'll make sure that from here to here remains at the 900 pixel length that we're desiring. All right, now in each of these, I'm going to drop an HTML graphic. I'm going to put in a JPEG of a Novel Vibe icon. So we'll come here and we'll grab the Novel Vibe JPEG and click OK. Or click Open there. Click Insert. Then I'm going to center this so that here in the table it's also centered. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So again, use the WYSIWYG to drop down. Find the image finder, click choose file, go down and uh, grab the icon or image that you're looking for, open that, and click insert. Again, we're, we want to center it. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't center it. Sometimes it pushes left or right, but if it's centered, it looks nice. Press OK there, and then here, we're just going to add some text. Says welcome to our new landing page. We're going to resize this to 36, and we're leaving out a fancy color to kind of 
give it some flair. Click OK. And now you'll see that when we look at the landing page, we've got the graphics on both sides, and there's the welcome to our new landing page right here that we've just built using simple HTML elements. And uh, the blue that we've had as the background, we can actually edit that and make it any color that we want. So we can actually go to a gray, or I'll try a light gray. Click OK. And now when we go back, instead of it being that blue that it was before, it's now this gray. And now you can use an image editor uh, to change the background on these icons so that it's it has a transparency so that it also picks up this background color instead of uh, showing the white, which might look, make it look a little nicer. But for the purposes of this webinar, we'll, uh, we'll move on. We're going back to Workspace, Edit Workspace. And now I'd just like to talk about the different elements that you can drop into your page. The first we've already covered is a table element. The list element is something we can add. And uh, I'm actually going to drop another table down here. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. Asterisk. 100 pixels. 700 pixels. 100 pixels. And an asterisk. And what that's going to do is make sure that everything that I drop into here looks the same. I'm actually going to change this so it's only three columns. We'll do 900. Just like that. That's about 100. So you have to make sure that this, instead of percent, says pixels. Click OK. And there you have it. You can see that it lines up right there at 900 pixels. So we're going to drop in a list element. And what the list element allows you to do is create a list where you can add other elements. We're going to call this title or this uh, list property Entries and Vibe. And then if you had additional entries in Vibe, you could list those out here in the, in the list. We'll click OK just to see what that looks like on the landing page. You'll see that it carries across the 900 pixel width, which is something that we like. Okay, go back to Workspace, Edit Workspace. The next element that you can drop into the landing page is an entry. The entry enables you to reference an entry that has previously been created in Novell Vibe. The actual content of your landing page can be created in entries elsewhere on the Vibe site, which are then simply referenced from the landing page. This is helpful if you want to duplicate the same information on multiple landing pages. So after you create the information in an entry, you can then reference that entry from multiple different landing pages, which makes it kind of nice. The next element would be a folder element. And uh, very similar to an entry, you can reference, instead of an entry, you in, reference an entire folder that has previously been created in your Vibe site. Now the next uh, element that you can drop in is an enhanced view. And the enhanced view, I'm going to go down here, and we're, we're not going to cover a lot of the information. Uh, or we're not going to drop those into the canvas as much, but uh, I am going to talk about each and each type of enhanced view that we can use. So the first would be display an entry. Instead of just displaying one entry or referencing to the entry, what an enhanced view display an entry does is displays the ent entry title, the description, who the author is, what date it was created, as well as the 10 most recent comments to that entry. All right. The next is displaying recent entries. So this is plural. It displays the most recent entries from, the spe from a specific folder, displaying the title, description, author, date, and the 10 most recent comments for each of those entries. The next would be displaying a list of uh, a list of recent entries. What this does is it, least, it lists them in the most recent entries from the specific folder, 
displaying the title, author, and date of the entry, but will not show you uh, the ten, mo ten most recent comments for each entry. Displaying a sorted list of recent entries, the sorted list displays a list in alphabetical order, and then displays the title, author, and date of the entry. Sorted list of files displays a list in alphabetical order of the files that were most recently added to the folder. Important to note here, it also uh, includes files that are attached to the entries. So any attachments would be listed here. Now this is the one we were going to talk about, displaying a, a calendar. I'm actually going to drop this in here and display it, the calendar. We're going to set the width at 900 pixels to make sure that it fits in nicely with the page. And we'll add these scroll bars when needed and click OK. We'll add our calendar folder, click OK, and then scroll down to the bottom here and click OK so we can view what it looks like. So now we're viewing an entire calendar instead of just calendar entries, which is what the calendar element would do if you, uh, or folder element would do if you just displayed a folder. So the calendar entry allows you to actually display the entire calendar so those who are viewing it get a full view of, of the month. You can change it so that it uh, would show work day instead of just a full day. And go from there. Workspace, Edit Workspace. We'll come back here to continue talking about the other enhanced views. Make sure to drop it in a place in the canvas where it actually will pull up different properties. Displaying a My Calendar Events. Now this is a new feature with 3.3 that was just released on June, uh, June 12th, uh, June 13th. The My uh, Calendar Events is a nice feature because it allows uh, you to set it up so that any user that is logged in uh, would be able to see all of the calendar events and task it, tasks that they've been assigned to. So it'd be specific to that user. So if you embedded this on a landing page, any unique user that was coming to that would see tasks that are pertinent to them and not pertinent necessarily to the entire team. So that's kind of a cool feature. Displaying a task folder and the enhanced view would display a specific task folder with information about each task, such as the title, due date, priority, and so forth. The My Tasks is similar to the My Calendar events in that it will display tasks that the unique logged in user are assigned to. And then the last one would be displaying a survey. This would allow a specific folder to be shown in a full interactive view and users can participate in the survey directly from the landing page. So instead of having to go to a survey folder, they can just take the survey directly from, from the landing page instead of having to click around and, and find it. That's kind of a nice feature as well. We did talk about the graphic already. Linking a URL enables you to create a link to a, a web URL. So we're actually going to drop that in over here to the left, right above Entries and Vibe. And we'll do HTTP www.novell.com And we're going to have it open up in it. We'll have it open in the same window, that's fine. Come down to the bottom, click OK, and now we'll see what that looks like. Because we gave it a title, the title is going to show up here, and then when we click OK, we're still inside of Vibe, but now we're displaying Novell.com here within the landing page from a link. We'll go over uh, here in a minute what it, what you can do to display an embedded web page, which is a little bit different than just the link. But this is helpful if you have a sorted list and you don't want to take the time to necessarily do an HTML element. You can list them out underneath each other and have links to websites, kind of a, a blog list or, or whatever. We'll come back here to Edit Workspace to look at some of the other elements that you can drop in. The Utility Element. This has a number of different options. A link to follow this folder or workspace. So if you 
want to make it easily followable, you put that out there, and then whoever visits the website, uh, the Vibe site, your landing page, can click on that, and they'd be automatically subscribed to the folder or workspace. Linking to my workspace would be an element that whenever someone clicks on that, they'd, they'd be taken to their personal workspace in Novell Vibe. Link to share this folder or workspace allows individuals to uh, share it with others using Vibe. Link to Vibe administration page is just easy access for those to be able to contact their Vibe admi administrator. And then the sign-in form is something that uh, if you put on there would not be visible if you're logged in, but for if you have an external page and you want someone to be able to log in from the, from the external page, you put that on there and as long as they're not logged in they'd see the button and then they could sign in from there instead of having to go up into the top right hand corner to log in. So it's kind of a cool thing as well. So those are uh, utility elements. For a custom JSP, what this allows you to do is uh, enables you to reference a custom JSP file that has previously been created by your Vibe administrator. We've already covered the next element, which is HTML, and then embedded web, web page is actually something I'd like to cover in a little bit more detail now. So we're going to drop this embedded web page right under Entries in Vibe. I'm going to choose a pixel width, a uh, pixel height of, uh, let's choose 600 and a width of 450, which would be half of this uh, 900 pixels that we're looking for. We'll set the scroll bars to auto, and then we're actually going to go over here to novell.com. And we're going to pull in this request a call form. So here's this web form that Novell uses for those who are interested in, in uh, finding out more about Novell. And we can actually embed this web form by click, right clicking on the uh, request a call button, copying that link address. And now when we come back here, we can copy this link address here. We'll give it a name uh, request a call. Click OK, and now you'll see that we have this embedded web page, the web form, is just displayed right here. Click OK, and now we can see what it looks like on the, on the landing page. Another uh, feature of something someone has asked about is how to embed uh, web access email. So if your organization has a web access email, Novell uh, uses gmail.novell.com. I can copy this URL, come back to Workspace, Edit Workspace. I'm actually going to create another table right here. I'll set the pixels again at, at, uh, at 450, four columns, 450 pixels, 450 pixels, click OK, I'm going to drag this up right here, I'm going to drag another embedded web page here, copy that web access email URL. give it a name. We're going to set the height into 600 and the width to 450. Click OK. And now on our landing page we have not only this web form where someone can click in here and, and request a call directly from the landing page, but they can also access their email. So if I log in here, you'll see that my emails are listed and I can Use the scroll bars to find information that I'm that I'm looking for.
just within the landing page. And because I've used a URL specific to the web access, I can log out, and then anyone else that's using the landing page would be able to get back to that. And log into their own unique uh, email from the landing page. All right. So that's about wraps up landing pages. Um, just as a quick review, we'll come back to the landing page and you can see that we have somewhat of a clean layout. It's 900 pixels wide with all the elements that we're using. We have our little header. We've got a couple of web forms, web pages, uh, different links. We have a list if we wanted to add it and a calendar. And we hope that this has been helpful for you to know how to make custom landing pages and uh, give your landing pages that custom personal face to make it a little bit more personable. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I don't know if that's a good thing. We'll try to respond to those either by typing to you or... Uh, recording additional videos that we'll put out on YouTube as well as uh, within the Nobel Media Guide. So thank you again for your attendance and uh, have a great day.